So you just draw a circle, then a line, and then just color it in. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Drawing with Moxie. Today, I'm gonna give you guys 10 digital art tips to help you draw better and faster. We're gonna take my painting of Nessa from this to this. I've been doing digital art myself for like, wow, 10 years. So hopefully there's a few things that I can pass on. If you have any tips to help anyone else that might see this, put it in the comments below and let's help each other out. If you're ready, remember to subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss anything, and let's go. Tip number one, brushes don't matter much. Seriously, I did this whole painting with three brushes, really just variations of one brush. All you need is a hard round brush, a soft round brush, and something that's fully open. If you don't want to set them up yourself, I've got them available on my website for free. And that's a great price. You can just download them, install them, and now you have everything you need. What's more important is understanding shapes, forms, lighting, and values. In step eight, I go through how you can do basically anything with just a lasso tool and a soft brush. So stick around. Tip number two, don't just use reference, use varied reference. Just spend like five minutes before you start drawing just getting some ideas. I grabbed different styles of the character I'm drawing. So the, the concept art, 3D model, cosplay. I know some of you out there aren't even using reference at all and you should be. And if you get a bunch of it, then you'll go even further. Beyond. Bring it all into your document and just start sketching. Tip number three, get loose when you're sketching. Warm up, draw some weird lines and shapes and swirls and all that. And when you actually start, don't start trying to draw the best eye you've ever drawn. I almost always start with the body and try to draw everything in big sweeping lines. Now's the time to try everything. You know, make mistakes, screw up, you know, try things you're not sure about. It's really easy to change things when you're sketching, so take advantage of that. My original drawing for this was actually pretty rigid, so I've gone back and done a quick alternate version. When you're drawing, try to use your elbow as the pivot point instead of like your fingers or your wrist. It'll help with those cleaner lines. I actually still struggle with this a bit when I'm drawing small like this, but like I said, it really helps the most with big, swooping, clean line art. Anyway, here's what the sketch looked like. Oh, and let me know who your favorite Pokemon trainer is in the comments. Next tip, tip four, use the navigator. That's this thing down here. The navigator is good because you can see your entire drawing no matter how zoomed in you are. So you can be working on like the details of the face. You can still see the whole drawing without having to zoom in or out or anything. You can set it up by going window, navigator. Easy. Tip number five, flip your canvas. This is probably the most helpful thing you can do and easily the most scary. You can be going through this drawing, loving what you're doing, and then you flip it over and there's there's eyes in foreheads and everything's weird and malformed and you just get sad and disheartened. But flipping it tells you exactly what's wrong and how to fix it. Sometimes when you've been working on something for too long, you just get too close to it. So this helps you keep things balanced and even. And then you can just go in and change the things that look weird. I often use liquify, which you can see happening here and I'll talk about it more later in the video. You want flip canvas horizontal set to a, a key bind you can use really easily. I have mine set to control shift R. Next tip, were you never able to figure out how to color in between the lines as a kid? Me either. So here's something you'll really like. The lasso tool. Tip six, lasso tool flats. Use the lasso tool to create the exact shapes that you need for your base colors. And then just use either the fill tool or just hit alt backspace and it fills it in just like that, which is at least 37 times quicker than painting the whole thing in. Don't underestimate this tool. More about it in tip eight, but first, Tip seven, locking and clipping layers. If you hit this little transparency icon here, you can lock your layer, which means you can only draw on the areas that have active pixels. So on this locked face layer, I can only draw on the face. Even though I'm painting the brush like all over the place here, it's confined to that locked layer. If you like playing it safe, you can make a new layer and alt click between those two layers to create a clipping mask, which means anything you draw on that layer will stay confined to the area of the layer that it's clipped to. It's pretty much the same thing. All right, we're getting into some juicy stuff now. So if you've learned anything so far, make sure to hit the like button. It tells me if I'm doing a decent job and you know, it helps with the algorithm too. Smash like. Tip eight. Lasso shading. You've used your soft brush and you've laid down a bunch of shadows everywhere, but it's all a little bit too soft. You want some like hard, sharp drop shadows. But yeah, we can do some of that. So if you create that shape with your lasso tool and you know where you want the hard shadow to be, you can use your soft brush. Use it along that lasso shape to create this hard line that fades off into a nice soft gradient. I do it in lots of little high impact places like here on Ness's stomach the hair to get some really reflective shininess to it. Basically just like painting a sky in her hair here. It works great on basically any really close drop shadow like the hair here. Excuse my massive head. And you can definitely do it with highlights too. Uh, like in the little eye crevices here. I know what these are called. I did it on the upper nose as well and you can see it on the neck too. It's such a ridiculously simple but realistic technique. Just a nice soft flick of the pen then a lasso selection and boom you've got yourself this crazy drop shadow from the arm that maybe doesn't make sense. I don't know. You can even use it for like anime cell shading. Underrated combo. Ready for another crazy overpowered tool? The dodge tool. 
let's talk about highlights. Man, this tool is so broken. It is overpowered, it is way too good, and it can also completely ruin your drawing. It can be your best friend, but it is also a complete noob slayer. The dodge tool basically creates a warm spot. It's like shooting a really powerful light wherever you aim your brush. And yeah, I mainly use it for highlights. Here I'm using it mostly on Ness's clothes and skin, using a mix of soft brush and lasso tool and just some hard brush as well. That's another cool thing about this tool is you can use any of your brushes that you want. It is absurdly powerful on hard metallic objects. You can see down here on this stomach bracelet thing. What is this thing? I've got the basic base color and a shadow all on one layer and I'm just blasting it with this dodge tool and it's doing all the rest of the work for me. It's the same with these beads. As long as you lay the groundwork of base colors and then a shadow, dodge tool can do the rest for you. This should be illegal and it works just as well for skin too, especially on like really obvious highlight points like the lips tips of noses, stuff like that. Stuff with a lot of specularity. You just have to be careful using it on bigger areas of skin because you're just gonna blow everything out and overexpose it. You don't want your art to end up looking like this, unless you do, but you don't. And we're at the final tip. I'm glad you made it this far because this tip was a game changer for me. And it probably will be for you too if you don't know it already. Tip 10 is... <laughs> I don't know why I exaggerated that so much. Liquify is ridiculous, because you can just move anything like water. Oh, I get it. As long as all the stuff you want to move is on one layer, you can just fix anything. I've noticed myself using less and less layers the more I do digital art, and I think, I think this might be the reason. Liquifying things around sometimes distorts whatever you move a little bit kind of blurs it so you might have to go back in afterwards and, and clean up a bit but it is beyond worth it so like I was saying because I have the entire face and all the features on one layer I can go in here and just move the nose around or the mouth anything and like I was saying it's really powerful when used when flipping your canvas horizontally because if you see anything wrong you can just liquefy it around you'll want this on a, a really easy reachable keybind mine set to control shift x and yeah, if you're delicate enough with it, you can you can change expressions. You can move their eyebrows around like I'm doing here. I also use the mouse a lot for this, just for the really precise movements. I find it to be a little more accurate. You don't want to go too nuts with this. Like I mentioned, there's there's a bit of smudging and some things are just better left to you know being on separate layers and transformed with the transform tool. So there you go, 10 digital art tips. Hopefully one or two were helpful. And if they were, smash like for me because it helps like mad. If there's something specific you'd like to see a tutorial on, uh, leave that in the comments. And yeah, if you're new, hit the subscribe button. I have so many more videos coming, challenges. Speaking of which, if you missed my drawing Pokemon as Animal Crossing characters video, click here. If you want to learn more, I actually do big artworks like this every month on Patreon. This month, we're moving on to Smash Bros characters. Just did a big poll on Twitter and it looks like it's Zero Two Samus. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Join the Drawing with Moxie Discord. We share art and do critiques over there. I'm always chatting. Links in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.